Could you become the Flash? Let's run it through. His name is Barry Allen, and he is the fastest man alive. In a freak accident involving chemicals and lightning, Barry Allen was given super speed, enabling him to become the superhero The Flash, fighting alongside the Justice League and protecting Central City. But could this really happen? Could you become The Flash? Ironically, there's no fast answer. Still, let's try and simulate what would happen if you were like Barry Allen. So how exactly did Barry Allen gain his super speed? Well, Barry is what's called a forensic scientist. Forensic scientists are a special type of scientists that study forensics. Forensics is basically the field of DNA study and all that. Usually, forensic is involved in law enforcement, so Barry could also be called a police scientist, although that's a more general term. So, we know that Barry worked with chemicals, as certain chemicals are needed for his profession. We'll get to which ones in a little bit here. So, in the origin story, lightning strikes the chemicals he's working with, and then now supercharged chemicals enter his body and supercharge him, giving him super speed. But could this happen to you? Well, while a lot of the Flash is theoretical, this is actually one of the more plausible answers. See, there's this substance known as hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a big conductor of electricity, but it does a little more. Not only does it conduct, hydrogen peroxide is a main ingredient in making what's called a fuel cell. A fuel cell is basically a machine that acts like a giant battery, using certain fuels and hydrogen peroxide to power itself so it can create energy. And you know what's gotta be the biggest coincidence in the world here? Hydrogen peroxide is a chemical often used by forensic scientists to disinfect anything they can pull evidence from. So it's likely that if you were working on a crime as a forensic scientist, you would be working with hydrogen peroxide. Now, when the lightning strikes your hydrogen peroxide, it does become supercharged. And since lightning does make quite a mess, it's possible the splash of hydrogen peroxide could enter your body, through your mouth, maybe a wound you have, or maybe even your eyes and pores. So, it is possible that you could fry, since the hydrogen peroxide is electrically supercharged now. But, there's also a possibility you don't fry. Why, you may ask? Let's take a step back to fuel cells. A fuel cell is almost an infinite process. Aside from creating energy for whatever it's powering, fuel cells actually create the very thing they need to fuel themselves and keep going on being a battery. What is this fuel, you may ask? Water. The fuel for fuel cells is hydrogen and oxygen. What happens is the electric charge in hydrogen peroxide gives the fuel cell protons and electrolytes that it needs to create energy. It also needs hydrogen and oxygen to work with those electrolytes and protons to create that same energy. The protons carry some of the hydrogen into the oxygen, where it creates water that then leaves the fuel cell. The electrolytes stay put and create a positive or negative charge, depending on the charge needed for the hydrogen and oxygen to create energy. So what does all this have to do with you becoming the Flash? Well, your body is about 60% water by the time that you're fully grown. To be fair, that's a lot of water. If you've got hydrogen peroxide that's supercharged in your body, and it's creating protons and electrolytes, your body can essentially become a fuel cell for itself. Keep in mind, water is H2O, meaning it's made of two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. These two sound familiar? They are the main energy makers in fuel cells. With supercharged hydrogen peroxide, you become a fuel cell for yourself, using up water in your body to make energy, and then simply reusing that water to do the same thing. The only issue would be the temperature of your body. A lot of fuel cells run at like 800 degrees Fahrenheit or something crazy like that, and that would kill you, right? Well, we'll get to how that would be avoided in a second here. So what does this all mean for you? Well, theoretically, you would now be your own source of infinite energy. By this logic, you could, in fact, use super speed in more ways than one. On command, you'd be able to cool down and heat up your body to almost an infinite degree. You can do this because your body already is able to cool down and heat itself up, but on a smaller scale. You've got infinite energy, you can do both to basically an unlimited amount, meaning you would not overheat, and technically you couldn't freeze to death either you'd be able to make your body just go faster in general even, 
as well as make what's called your perception go faster. For those who may not know, perception is how fast you're able to actually understand what you're observing. So, when I look at a black shirt, and my mind identifies the shirt as being black, that's my perception at work. Perceiving things can be hard when things are going too fast, though. When you're on a roller coaster, I doubt you can identify a person with specifically red shoes that have blue stripes here and there from a distance. However, if you were just standing still, you could perceive that almost instantly from the same distance. However, in your case, if you were to become the fuel cell for your own body, you could quicken any process that you have control over inside your body. This doesn't just mean you can make your legs go faster, which you could, but it would also mean that your perception could go faster. So, if you were to go, let's say, 200 miles per hour with your super speed, you'd look incredibly fast at the people, and don't get me wrong, that is incredibly fast. But your perception would be keeping up with your body, so to you it would look like you're jogging. And 200 miles per hour wouldn't even be your limit. In fact, you wouldn't have a limit. Since your body is now a source of infinite energy, you have that infinite amount of energy at your disposal. However, there is one problem. The faster you run, the more particles in the air you're exposed to. Now, normally that's not an issue, but if you were a speedster like the Flash, it would be. The faster you go, the more force those particles exert on you. It's called Newton's Third Law of Motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Basically, the faster you run against the particles in the air, the more the particles are going to push back to try and equalize the energy being exerted. This would actually hurt you, and if you went too fast, it would literally rip you to shreds in mere seconds. So, is there a way around this? Well, there's two possibilities. One is that your body would have some kind of magnetic force field around it that could repel oxygen particles. Now, I know you're all wondering why I took that big of a jump. Force fields? Aren't those, like, not real? Well, believe it or not, recent studies have shown that humans do have some kind of force field around them, and can even feel something without touching it using this force field's energy. Kind of like seeing something out of the corner of your eye and knowing what to do about it. The only problem is that the air is magnetically neutral, meaning that a force field wouldn't be able to repel it. So, force field is out. The other possibility may be a vacuum. Vacuums, in this case, are basically areas that altogether lack particles. They are the emptiest space you can imagine. The heat in your fuel cell body, combined with the heat from the friction between you and the ground created if you were to go fast enough, could possibly create a vacuum around you, since heat can use up oxygen. However, neither of these would work, unfortunately. I mean, the vacuum itself might happen, but the flaw in both theories is that then you wouldn't have any oxygen. Your body doesn't produce oxygen, and even though your fuel cell body would be making water, humans can't yet take the oxygen out of water and use it to breathe like fish can. So you would just suffocate and die slower than if you were to be torn to shreds by the same oxygen that you needed not to die. So unfortunately, while the flash is theoretically possible, it wouldn't end up working out. Could you be exposed to supercharged chemicals that gave you super speed? Sure. Could you use that super speed? Technically, yes, but you'd be gone in a flash. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Science Powered Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like, and also make sure to leave a comment on what superhero or supervillain you guys want me to do next. And also, big thanks to Zane Little for commenting about this one. This episode happened because of him, and honestly, he does some pretty good stuff on his channel, so you guys go check him out. And uh, yeah, guys, make sure to leave a comment as for what episode you guys want to see in the future. And have a good day.